Well, Sami Zayn came out and he got a big long ovation and they sang his song and they did the whole nine yards. And then he said, you know, I just want to thank everybody. I'm very grateful for everything that happened. The reaction means a lot to me. And he says, you know, my story is not over. We are entering the final chapter, but the final chapter is not just about me. I want to call out Kevin Owens. So he calls Kevin Owens down to the ring. Owens comes out and he gets in the ring and he's just looking at Sammy and Sammy does this promo about how I want to say thank you. I want to say I'm sorry, but I know that we're beyond words right now and I know how much they put you through and you know, you couldn't beat Roman Reigns and I tried and I couldn't beat Roman Reigns and you know what? We couldn't do it separately, but I think that we could do it together. And the crowd does this big yes chant, and then Kevin Owens says, you know what, I don't need an apology, I don't need gratitude, I didn't come out and attack the bloodline for you, I did it for myself, I did it for my family. He says, my family was in the front row, and, uh, you know, they weren't there at the Royal Rumble when the bloodline was absolutely beating the hell out of me, and you were standing there and watching. He says, I did this for my family, and you know what? I also did this for your family so that your family wouldn't have to sit there and watch as you got beaten up here at this pay-per-view. And he says, if you want some help against the bloodline, well, you should go ask your brother Jay. And the fans boo, and he walks out of the ring, and Sami Zayn's standing there looking so sad. And so they do a quick rundown of what's coming And they cut back, and Sammy's about to, uh, you know, wave goodbye as he's leaving. And also, he gets blindsided by Baron Corbin. So they go to commercial. Real real, real quick, real quick. So, so um, I really like this because, um, you know, obviously the key things um, that that are, you know, the Kevin Owens thing. It, it, you know, you don't need to be giving it away right away. I like, you know, the longer you do this, the more, you know, the better story it tells. So. You know, you um, you know, it'd been very easy for them to go in there and have Kevin Owens accept and and start building, you know, that match. But we got six weeks, so um, we don't need. I think that I think three weeks out, we need the match pretty much done. But uh, we got three weeks of storytelling that you can do and begin, you know, situations on different shows where they end up for whatever reason. I mean, that, what they should do. I mean, as far as like saving each other and things like that, or or one helps the other or whatever, you know, to, to where they end up together, even though Kevin has said that he doesn't want to end up together. So that's kind of like the, just the situation the way it should be. But uh, they did nothing on the rest of the show uh, in that direction. Well, when they came back from the break, and actually during the break, they had picture-in-picture picture of, of Corbin just beating Sami Zayn all over. So they come back from the break, and Corbin's got the mic, and he essentially says... You, Sammy, are an embarrassment. You lost in front of your friends and your family. And, uh, of course, Sammy's all pissed off. And Corbin says he's a failure. The story is over. He's let down everybody. Everybody in all of Canada he's let down. So Adam Pierce looks up, and he looks at Sammy, and he shrugs, and he says, Go get him. So Sammy hits the ring. They ring the bell. They get nine minutes. And uh, Sammy ends up, obviously, getting the win with the big kick out of the corner. And, uh, you know, him running to the ring got a huge pop, and him hitting the kick in the corner got a huge pop, and getting the pin got a huge pop. This match did not have great heat. It was uh, like this for a lot of the matches on the show, actually. Well, it was the same thing. They want to see the guys. They want to see the entrances. They want to see the finish. But they don't necessarily want to sit there through all that wrestling. And uh, that's what happened here. They watched the match, and then they popped big when they got the finish. Well, the the other thing, too, is is that... um... You know, for for um, their their mentality, obviously, watching the way this match was laid out, is that Sammy is best served being the underdog, and they have this underdog mentality. So therefore, he's got to get beat up for a lot of time, and um, you know, and then comes back to win. That's their Sammy story. And I, if that's is that the right story right now when Sammy is up here and Baron Corbin is down here? Um, I don't know. I was, um, you know, I mean, they wanted to fill nine minutes, you know, and, and uh, if you're going to do a long Corbin match, obviously you got to sell a lot, you know, for the, you know, the heels got to get his heat and everything, which didn't get any heat, but, you know, or got minimal heat, I'd say. So it's just it's just interesting that a guy who, 
is so much of a top guy and there's nothing wrong with it i just thought it, it was very interesting watching the mentality that that you know again that they believe that he has to sell and sell and sell and sell and sell and that's what's going to get him over and not be strong like um another guy you know who would be well cody rhodes last week right didn't he destroy baron corbin yeah he pretty much destroyed corbin so so it's it tells you the difference between the perception of those two guys and it's not like well you know sammy's so much smaller cody's so much smaller too cody went in there and like he sold a little bit but basically cody destroyed the guy i mean it was just basically this was this is showcase for cody he's a big star corbin is the guy who's in there with him to you know make him look like a big star okay and in this case corbin was in there because the idea is, is that Sammy must get beat up a lot to get over. And I don't know that that's necessarily correct, but I'm just, I just, that was just what I noticed was the, the difference between those two matches and the difference in the perception of the two guys in the sense that their belief is that, you know, that he's the underdog, so therefore he cannot look strong and just go in there and, and run through him like he's a mad dude, you know, waiting to get to the top, you know, you know, face the top guys and he's running through these big guys because he's just, um, you know, he's just a top guy. You know, it's like he's, um, you know, he is in their minds still what he was. Um, he's the plucky underdog baby face and that's his role. By the end of this, I was convinced Iron Mike Sharp was the best wrestler who ever lived. He's low key at first. Like, bah, 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 bah. but he keeps going. Bah, 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 bah. He claps. Yeah, I got a headlock. Yeah. <laughs> ah, I'm tall. I'm giant Mike Sharp. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.